none of you can be mad at me. I don't want to hear anything. Um, shut up. Don't say anything. <laughs>
I don't think I understood a lot of it, but I did read it. Pride and Prejudice is very special to me because whenever I was sick as a child, I would always watch with my mum the Colin Firth adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. It's the best adaptation. <laughs> I won't hear anything else. And it's just the story. I just know it like the back of my hand, you know? So I'm so excited to see how it's adapted into this murder mystery retelling. Lizzie Bennet is a formidable litigator and Darcy is her like opposing lawyer essentially they're kind of going against each other this is going to be i think there's three going to be in this series she's not doing all of the jane austen books but i think it's gonna be three where they're all like murder mystery retelling so i'm super excited to get to this i think it's just gonna be fun i'm not looking for this to be like a literary masterpiece i'm just really excited to see how they adapt pride and prejudice and have a lot of fun with like a silly murder mystery with darcy and i hope that they keep like the core of the characters and I hope that she imagined Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy when writing it because he is Mr. Darcy. <laughs> then we have one that I think a lot of you are going to be are, are going to be happy to see on this list and it's Finley Donovan is killing it. Yeah, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Shame on you. I feel like this is booktube's like fave murder mystery kind of book and I'm like, well, uh, we have a problem because I haven't read it. <laughs> We're following Finney Donovan, who's this writer. She's describing, is it her editor or agent? Her agent. She's met at lunch describing the plot. And then this woman mistakes that she is actually a hit woman and gives her a lot of money to kill her husband. And I've just heard it's funny, you know, it's a bit all over the place. Finney Donovan's a bit of a mess. And this one I'm just so excited to read because so many people on BookTube have loved it. And I'm like, well, we're waiting for my for my seal of approval. No, Mara, I was even books like, where is Murder Mystery in Chief? I view myself as like second in command. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> that's my perception of myself. No one says that, but yes. <laughs> Okay, word. I just feel like I have to read this. I have to know what everyone's talking about. I'm very, very excited. I feel like it's probably gonna be the kind of book that I love, but again, I've been putting it off because I'm like, Megan, you can't stop that until you finish more series. But if you watched my TBR Cluedo this month, which you haven't, go check it out. You'll know that I am planning on finishing quite a lot of series. Probably at least like five series this month in June. So fingers crossed, I could start maybe like one of these if I'm really well behaved. <laughs> Next we have another one of the fantasies I'm most excited to read and that is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambri. So I've spoken before about how I want to read this so badly because I love Lizelle's YouTube channel. I watch quite a bit of AuthorTube. I go through stages. I'm like saving up. Oh, my watch later is full of AuthorTube videos but I'm saving up for a moment I can actually start writing. That is on the horizon. I'm going to do it. Everything I want is on the other side of fear. I have to remind myself of that. <laughs> Lizelle and Lindsay Puckett who's got her debut novel coming out later this year which I'm very excited for. They're probably the two author tubers I watch the most. And so I'm just very, very excited to read this. I've heard Lizelle speak about it so much. It's about this girl who's from a family of witches and she's given a task and the task is to kill her first love. Otherwise, all of her family will lose their magic. And I remember Lizelle spoke about how her first image that kind of developed into this book was a girl sitting in a bath of blood. And I'm like, whoa, okay, you sold me. <laughs> You've got me. I've also had just great things. I feel like that everyone that reads it loves it. And it's quite a chunky book. It's almost 500 pages. And I do tend to like my fantasy, either like novellas. I really like fantasy novellas or I like it a bit longer. I like my fantasy to have a lot of depth and especially YA. I feel like sometimes they're scared of being long. Like they're always like 300 pages and I love a short book. I mean, like my average average page count for books per month has always been like 290. Like I read quite a lot of short books, but I do think the fantasy that I rate really high is the kind of longer, more complex fantasy. Next we have another like booktube darling for mysteries and it is A Curious Beginning, the first Veronica Speedwell mystery. So yeah, this is another one I've been saving for so, so, so long. I'm like hitting my leg with these. <laughs> I wouldn't even let myself buy this for so long because I was like, you have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait, like. <laughs> I have used up every bit of my patience. I have used up every bit of fucking self-control. I don't know much about it other than we've got Veronica Speedwell and she's like out here saving mysteries and there's also like uh, a romance. But I just know that so many people have loved this who have read it. And again, I just feel like we need to find out what I think of it. I'm sorry, it's in the public interest. It's in the public, don't yell at me for starting my series. It's in the public interest. <laughs> so <laughs> this I would say, and In the Hall with a Knife are the two that I've been most, like, Megan, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to start it. But 
if I finish a few series, I think, I think I am allowed. <laughs> Then we have The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. So firstly, I mean the title, Thursday Murder Club, Marlowe Murder Club, it's about a <laughs> elderly protagonist. So it's very similar to my favourite book of last year. I would say this is another one of the kind of like mainstream murder mysteries in the UK especially that's come out lately. Um, and I'm just very excited particularly because it is so similar to the Thursday Murder Club. It's like an elderly friend group solving murder mysteries. So I'm intrigued to see how it compares and if it, is it the case of like two greats having the same idea at the same time or I don't know, I, it must have been because they came out so close together. This one came out I suppose in 2021. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of want to know, does it copy Thursday Murder Club or is it just like a case of serendipity at the same time? And then my last series is one I'm incredibly excited for, but it hasn't actually come out yet, but I'm so excited for it. And it is Murder Before Eversong. Have I got that name wrong? It's a Canon Clement mystery by Reverend Richard Coles. If you're not from the UK, Reverend Richard Coles is kind of like, uh, like a TV personality. He's also a vicar. <laughs> But he's like a TV personality as well. I think he used to be like in a band back in the day. He's a very funny, clever man. Um, he has written books in the past. See, here's the thing. One of my favourite books ever is written by Richard Osman. Obviously, last year, my favourite book. He's a TV personality again. And so this whole conversation about celebrities writing books has to come up. But both of these people, I think uh, Richard, Reverend Richard Cole has written books in the past anyway already. But they're the kind of people you would expect to write a book. When people become celebrities in one avenue or another, I don't believe that immediately excludes them from ever being allowed to write books because people can have multiple interests. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like someone could be an actor, but also love writing. Like it's or you know it, there's duality to people however I will agree there is a problem big problem with you know ghost writers I've spoken about this in the past I mean you short look at Kendall and Kylie Jenner writing a book <laughs> or people getting success that don't necessarily deserve it <coughs> David Ralliams like <laughs> but I you know he strikes me as the kind of person who is going to write a great book so this is about a vicar in a small English quaint town there's like petty shit happening like you know it's a parish with old people <laughs> And you know, having, I went to church a lot when I was younger and I think I know the kind of people that are gonna be in this book. Anyway, a parishioner is found in the church, I think murdered with a, a pair of sacrifices <laughs> down into his neck. And you know, this is coming off of the, the back of things like Thursday Murder Club, the success of that I think, but it's more mainstream mysteries for me. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'll take all the mainstream mysteries, please. I'll like take it all, take, I'll get, you know, bring them all in, let it be the next hype thing because I love them. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. I've looked at some reviews of this already of people who had arcs and I do think it's getting mixed reviews because I think it's even more cosy mystery, quaint mystery than Thursday Murder Club, like even more so. I think it's probably com gonna compare most to something I've read to like A Quiet Life in the Country by T.E. Kinsey, like the Lady Hardcastle mysteries which are like purely cozy mysteries do you know what i mean i think it's probably going to be more closely aligned with that in terms of a uh, voice and narrative but that excites me like you know there's someone writing a real cozy mystery really really excites me in the mainstream so i'm very very excited for this i'm hoping we're going to get lots more you know it's already been named the series will be named he's a big name so i think this is going to be quite a long running series like the thursday meta club and i'm super duper excited for it so there we have it that is the series i most want to start don't have a go at me <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of talking about this is to make me read the books that I need to read and so that I can read these essentially. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, which of these you would like me to prioritise because you know that would be really good to know which ones you're most excited to hear my opinion on. If you've gotten to the end of the video, hmm, comment the spyglass emoji because there's a lot of mysteries. <laughs> this is mostly mysteries this list. I feel like the series I have to finish are predominantly fantasies and so I'm like trying to get them out of the way so I can read some more mystery series. But yeah, comment that down below if you got until the end. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!